she's, she's obviously a, been a dedicated carer and in carrying <laughs> on in, in the work with animals, which is just fantastic. So Lovely. Thank, thank you very much, Tim. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here, so thank you very much to Tim and Rosemary for inviting me. Absolutely thrilled. So yeah, as Tim said, um, long history of work in the NHS. I'll just tell you a brief history of me. Um, I started riding when I was six and then um, all throughout my teenage years. So then I went to college, did A-levels, dropped out, went to work with horses and then I trained to teach people to ride. Um, and after that I went and worked with polo ponies in Windsor Great Park, had a fantastic time, got paid for that, cantering around Windsor Great Park. Um, after about four years I thought I'd better get a proper job and then went into the NHS as a nurse, trained to be a nurse and uh, stayed there for 20 years, had several children throughout as well. Um, after the NHS I then worked as a substance misuse worker, so working with injecting drug users right through to going into schools and teaching children. And then a job came up as a bereavement officer back in the NHS, so I went back there as a bereavement officer, then bereavement coordinator, and went on to manage the bereavement and mortuary services. So I was in bereavement for 10 years. Um, throughout that time, particularly from nursing, I had quite a lot of injuries. Um, lifting patients, you know, we were talking about quite a few years ago now, and there was a lot of lifting. Slipped a disc right, I think well, I, was, well, I was quite young really, and uh, quite a decline. So lots of osteopaths, chiropractors, um, pain clinics, lots of pharmaceutical drugs going up and up and up. So by the time I was in working in the mortuary actually, um, doing more lifting, I was, I think I've been to about five different pain clinics. Um, they couldn't do much with me. I'd been offered operations, which I'd refused. I was on max dose of everything, including an antidepressant to boot. I'm rattling around, I was. Um, and then I had uh, another injury, which led to me um, having to medically retire. I had two slip discs, and when they did an MRI scan, with the whole of my spine, well, there's not even bone in some of it. So I lost my career. I was at the pinnacle of my career, so steep decline with my mental health as well. Um, so for about a year and a half, I just started pootling towards the grave, really, because everything was going. Um, they couldn't really do much with me, the GPs, um, with regards to much more pain relief. Um, uh, I got carpal tunnel, arthritis, my feet were swelling, you know, it was, it, it was deteriorating. And then... I just I remember being at work and had a, a, a conversation about the string theory in quantum physics and um, I just started reading about quantum physics and then came across the fact that we're vortexes of energy at the cellular level and uh, as soon as I read that it was like, vortexes of energy? So, whoa, oh, well if, if that's so then surely I could start moving that energy and it was a real breakthrough in my head. I was, he was running around the house saying, oh, we've all texts of energy to my children. They thought I'd gone completely bananas <laughs> at that point. Um, and so it was, I set out on a mission to just research day and night. And that is what I did and still do, actually. So I started with the quantum mechanics, started doing all the meditation, you know, looking at consciousness, everything. Came across a lot about the heart and the Heart Maths Institute. And started swirling my energy and I could actually feel it moving around my head and body and I started getting better. I started being able to reduce my tablets and in a nutshell I came off them all. Not just like that but process. And then I thought well if I can do this for me then surely I can help other people. So of course you need a certification so I went and got a diploma in bioenergy healing but in the meantime, I was reading up about lots of different sorts of healing. So you've got like Richard Gordon, quantum touch, isn't it? Um, reconnection healing. You've got Bill Bengston with the energy cure. I was looking at all these different modalities. And in the meantime, I was practicing on any human that came near me and also animals. I started setting up a therapy room at my house and do you know what, my heart it just wasn't feeling right, it just wasn't feeling right. Anyway, I'd be going down the stables, practicing on my friend's horses and that was feeling right. 
especially like being in my jobbers and wellies, you know, with a bit of mud. That, that's my environment. It really is my environment. And I thought that is the way forward, Joe. So um, I still do help humans, um, but my focus is with any animal, any species, um, including insects. So initially when I started, you know, I could just feel a bit of warmth, you know, as I was going along. Oh, that's a little bit different. So, as you know, I know all healers, I'm sure you've probably been down this path. It's just keep on going, keep on going. And of course, especially with horses, um, initially, I was very reliant on um, feedback from a human as to whether they saw any difference. Uh, and uh, yeah, my friend was saying, no, I think there's some difference, there's some difference. And I gradually started seeing it for myself, so I carried on. And uh, you know, got just things are going from strength to strength. Um, so, what I would like to do, um, we're going to watch a video. I've put a compilation of photographs together, but also some little clips of video of some of the horses. And then I thought afterwards, I'll We'll go back and I'll tell you some of, about, about the horses because there's some really, really interesting case studies with all of them. Before we watch the video, I would just like to give out um, my handout. It's the Equine Energy Healing because on the back it shows you some of the signs of energy release with horses. Thanks, so if I thought if we go through that first then you'll be able to have a look on the video to see what you can see as the horses have their healing. So it goes right to the back page and there is a list and I'll tell you some of the things will be. <coughs> so as I'm starting the healing that I often start to hear their tummies rumbling as the energy starts moving through they often start letting off and they do, uh, you know, do the poo. Um, they also start, their skin starts rippling. Um, they'll start itching. That's a really good sign, itching. And then they'll start sometimes moving around, fidgeting a bit, shaking their heads. Uh, sometimes they pour. Uh, and the ultimate, the big, really big releases is the yawning. And you'll see lots of photographs of horses with their mouths open on here you'll see them yawning because that's really them releasing which I'm always thrilled when they start yawning so I'm like, yeah, this is good everything's working brilliantly all right um, I'll go through a bit about how I feel it and do it after we've watched the video and you can ask any questions as well because I'd like to, for you to watch the video and then I can really tell you about some of these horses We've lost Buster. Very famous. Now, I would just like to say I'm dedicating my talk in memory of Buster up here. I treated him just two weeks ago. He's um, my friend's horse, and he had arthritis and COPD, chronic obstruct obstructive pulmonary disease. He's a big old horse, and I thought trying to do healing on that, I, I, on him, you know, those sim those things, arthritis, I thought, is this, am I going to make any difference? But actually within the first session, he walked out with greater ease than when he went in. So it did work. And she was actually able to reduce his medication as well, his um, asthma medication. But... Uh, as I was saying to Tim, you know, as healers, we can't, you know, we do our best. And unfortunately with horses, their, their weight is not their best friend, especially when it comes to arthritis. And he got, um, he was in the field last Monday and he couldn't get up. And so she had to make the decision to say goodbye to him. But his sweetheart, so that's best. But he does feature in the video as well. Okay, is everyone happy with that? Yeah, shall I put it on and watch it? The light. Oh, I will turn them off if that's all right. I think it's the switch just by the door. <coughs> Thanks, Tim. <coughs> no, 
how it does, the, the picture does get bigger. These are when the lights first came. This is Patch. He worked for riding for the disabled and was feeling very overwhelmed with life. See how his coat rippled then, mm. and his breathing changed as well in this. <coughs> and also that he releases from the sheath, that's very common. Oh, okay. And also goes for the mare as she goes by. <laughs> mm. just, a, just an energy exchange, that Yeah, yeah. And there is size. Yeah. You can just see the light there. Pony club. Practic practicing, trying their hand there.
slope there. This horse is called Nemo and I'll talk about him afterwards. He's, um, he's in his twenties and he saw, he, he was a, a trap horse, you know, a horse and cart and his brother had a heart attack with him, next to him, so he was quite traumatised. He's still looking a little bit bewildered. This is his second session, but he, he's loving it, you can see. Mm. But he's not really completely sure. He knows it's nice, but mm. Mm. Not quite letting go. Hmm? Not quite letting go. No. No. You can see it, can't you? He's sort of on the edge, isn't he? Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we'd have to catch him. <laughs> and this is at the end of that session, actually. get you what you're, what you're doing for them do, you, do they get you yes uh, well usually eventually that's why i communicate with them just because some especially with him i'll tell you about him afterwards because the first session he <laughs> i think i just uh, worried him immensely so yeah i was quite surprised he did release in the end a little bit you know because yeah. especially when they're older they can hold it in. they've held so much in for so long mm. now this little boy is only five and he's got laminitis what's he got? laminitis what's that? so it's it's where there's a lot of swelling in the uh, in their hoof oh. it's very 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 painful mm. this is his third session um, and I've just started here, this was just a couple of days ago. So I, I don't go straight to where it's going to be sore on his feet. So introduce your energy or introduce yourself? Yes. Slowly. Yes. So I usually start from the shoulder. And even though he knows me, I still start from the shoulder. And often they have tension in so many other areas as well. I, I'll clear that first. So I was, I was just checking his body see um, how he was doing. Isn't that the all rounder chakra for animals? Is it breaking, breaking all chakra? One, yeah, I mean, like yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, you'll see how he moves his front legs here as I'm doing, I'm working around his hoof at the minute. Um, and he, he couldn't really tolerate that too much on his first session, but he, you see how he's just picking up his leg and I just asked him if he's all right, and he nods his head. Mm. It's engaging with me, you see. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was having a bad hair day anyway, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> he's obviously thinking, saw it out, Joe. They often like to put their muzzle on my hand. So this is about 20 minutes into the session, is laying down obviously. <laughs> now he's, um, 
one of his battered legs that there so the energy is particularly moving around there that's probably why he's itching there but down this leg here <coughs> Find that they drift off and go to sleep. Yeah. Or sort of trance yeah. Or state. Yeah. And he's pretty much getting there in the trance state. I mean, he's really struggling to keep his eyes open. So how long would a session like this take? Um, I think the first session I, I did with him was about an hour and a half because I needed to clear quite a lot, but I was with him for about an hour. Um, animals that refused to be treated. Yes, yes. How does that work? They try and kick me, bite me. <laughs> what do you mean? How do they present? Uh, yeah. You, you know, you know, ears back. Um, as I say, pacing around a lot. Um, Walking away. Yeah, Are I. Ever aggressive. Yes. Really. Yes. Yes. Um, there's one particular Irish horse I went to see, they're, they can, they're often quite badly beaten mm. when they're broken, and they're broken, this horse had been broken in four weeks. Mm. They have things smashed over their heads and all sorts, and when I went to him, I couldn't get near him, but all the energy coming off, yeah, he's off for a kip now. There was a lot of orbs about that night. It's definitely not the straw because it, I had the orbs in all the stables and I slowed it down and it's actually horses. I'm actually being able to stop it, freeze it and see images of horses. I thought there must be something there. There's such a flurry. Sorry, to were you yeah. going to say something? I was going to say that you had a... Um, yes. 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 Absolutely. And it's also very good, especially working around their head, if they're anxious and say the vet's come along and wants to give them an injection, it, it calms them down an awful lot when you're working around their head. This chap, although I went to see him for laminitis, you know, I, I checked obviously the, the whole of his body and he had a lot coming out of, around his mouth and it turns out he had a loose tooth that was causing him a lot of problems, which they took out. So this is Buster who um, um, unfortunately had to be put down and um, that was him just a couple of weeks ago and I think how much was perhaps going on in those back legs. And how the leg just went big and then yeah, smaller right. at the end. Yeah, yeah. So this little horse has uh, liver disease and if I can't do something, she's going to be put down basically, I'm her last resort. So I've been like, in, doing intensive healing with her just, and this lass is blind, you know, she's pretty much blind. The same one, blind? D yeah, this is a different horse, another pony. No, the one with liver disease, she's only six. So what I'll do, I just want to, I'll just go back 
so I can, ah, this is Nemo, that's who I want, I'll talk about him because it's so funny. Oh. Right, so Nemo, <laughs> I'll just tell you a bit about my communication as well, because obviously I was doing the healing and I thought, well I'd actually really like to be able to communicate with animals as well, <laughs> and I'd watch that Anna Breton back, I don't know if you've seen mm. her, isn't she amazing? So I've been doing a lot of practicing heart to heart with my dogs. Um, hadn't practiced it with the horse. And then I was doing some healing with Sid. He's an Icelandic horse. He was on here earlier. I was just, he was there as a, um, I was just doing demonstrations really. But his owner, Leslie, who also owns Buster, um, asked me to come and see him, spend a bit of time with him. And I was feeling around and I, the amount I was getting in my hands all over his body, it was just immense. Now I'd seen her riding the horse that morning and she couldn't get him into a canter. Didn't know anything else about him. Anyway, I worked on him for about 45 minutes. The most I had was a ripple of the skin. After 40 minutes, I actually just knelt in the stable. I just wanted to put my head in the, my hands. I think, what am I gonna do? And then I thought, I'm gonna try, the, try heart to heart communication. So, went up to him, put my hand on his breast, one hand on his shoulder. As I did that, he went like that. So I went like that. He went like that. I went like that. And then I just imagine connecting from my heart to his heart. Just say, and I always say, can, can I connect? And then I just said, relax and trust. And as I was doing that, he put his head around, put his muscle on my knee, and then he, his head to the front, and then he pulled his neck as high, 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 high as horse could ever go, and then tight into his chest, and then out, and then he dropped his head like that. And as he dropped his head, it was like this tsunami of emotion waved over me, over Leslie. We both started crying, and then this horse yawned for the next half an hour. <laughs> I thought, well, something's happened. <laughs> Um, and I thought that horse is going to be a different horse and she rested him for a couple of days it's always important to rest him um, at least for the, the whole day uh, and when she rode him he's like Pegasus now <laughs> so, uh, yeah he's amazing and she's uh, she's also noticed that his um, personality has developed um, and she's much closer connected she was very closely connected anyway but it, and all this tension came from, he was brought from, over from Iceland, he had a five day really traumatic journey on an aeroplane, so you can imagine, you know, with the emotion like this and so of course by the time he got to the UK and then, you know, he was moved three times and of course he'd been taken away from his country as well, you know, all of these things, but he was a stoical little chap holding on to it all and of course that's the problem I had when I was trying to move it, he was like holding on to it, you know, but the communication helped. Now, I didn't dare try that communication again for a while because I thought, what if it doesn't work? What, was it if, what if it was a fluke? Um, what if it was Leslie? Um, what if, what if? Until I um, came to Nemo. Uh, went to see him. Now, he's, he's in his 20s. He's seen his brother die of a heart attack. When I first saw him, he was looking a little bit, oh, he was definitely needs some healing. I didn't communicate, but I just went up to his shoulder, you know, and gently, gently, and then, oh, I'm not feeling anything in my hands, moved, not feeling anything. I thought, I, this, well, this has not happened before, I can't feel anything. Mm. And after a couple of minutes, and I said to his own, he took himself to the back of the stable and then just dropped his head looking so dejected and upset. And I said, I'm re I've really upset him. I said, I thought, I think I'd better go and talk to him. So once again, forced into communicate, trying to communicate. So, you know, did the same thing. And then as I asked to communicate and just trust and relax, it was like, ping. It's like somebody turned on the Christmas lights, it's like, it's like suddenly all this energy. I could feel it all. And so therefore I could work with it, as I could feel it. Um, and we did quite well. 
And then his owner, Becky, called me not that long ago and asked me to go and see him again. And this time when I turned up at the yard and he saw me, he was like... <laughs> and I could, I could feel, he's like... <laughs> anyway, we put him in the stable. I mean, it's always important for them to be able to wander around. I went in and then he was like... He was like bottom first no 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 my tummy no my head and, and, and then you could see me he just just didn't know which bit to put first and so what I had to do was I was going like this you know <laughs> big sweeps because <laughs> he was just so excited and it was so blooming wonderful and I thought oh well, this is amazing because I'm doing this presentation and it's like I've, I've spoken about Nemo before about how he turned on like the Christmas lights and I thought what a lovely sort of second phase of his healing journey you can see he's still looking a bit as you say a little bit it's nice but I'm not sure it's weird <laughs> type thing you can see it in his eyes but um, he did shake his head um, a bit throughout the session you know, there were signs of release and as you see at the end he, he let out some yawns which is great and I'm sure when I next go and see him he'll be able to relax even more but he, he was looking so much better but he was, he was such a sweetheart so funny so yeah from Nemo um, communicating again with him I thought right well, I may as well do this all the time it proved that a, I could do it and second it's really important important to oh hold on I've got to take a breath I've got too excited oxygen Joe <laughs> oxygen um, it's, it's really important to let them know what I'm doing, particularly if they haven't had healing before, which a lot of them haven't. So it's, it's, just, it's just a brilliant um, tool for me to use. And I also can feel things back from them. And I was saying to you earlier, wasn't I, about this. Um, I don't want to get into a full-blown conversation with them and hear all about their suffering. I do not want that. I couldn't manage it. I couldn't cope mentally with that. So it's literally, I, get, I let the feelings come in. I get the feeling of how they're feeling. Um, but yes, uh, once again, I said, with regards to ending the session, oh, I was talking to you earlier, wasn't I, about this? So yeah, so the horses know that I communicate with them and they communicate back to me. Now when... I know I've connected. You can see there is like radar like this. Mm -hmm. So I know I've connected. And sometimes I can feel their heart in train with mine. And like with the stallion, the big white stallion that you saw, when his heart connects, it's like boom, 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 boom. Uh -huh. And when I do training with, uh, with riders, um, <coughs> sometimes they feel it as well when they have a little practice themselves, even though they've never tried before, they, they can... They can feel that connection um, right so sorry where was I yes with regards to them communicating back to me there was um, a few times in healing I thought to myself right I think I've done enough now and then I thought well no I'll just do a little bit more and when I've gone to do that little bit more they've gone to that horse has gone to bite me and that happened three times. It's only on the third time I've realised that's not me. That's not you, Joe, saying stop. That's actually the horse saying stop. So I was actually picking up on them. But you're thinking it was me. And that's why they were getting cross with me. Because they knew that I could hear. But I hadn't stopped the healing. So I'm very aware now. When I'm feeling time to stop, I know it's them telling me. So, you know, I'm learning all the time. And the horses are teaching me, because if I don't get it right, they, they soon tell me. Um, yeah, so ideally you don't want them tied up so they can move around and be like Nemo and decide to t you know, tell you which part of their body they want starting with. Uh, also, it's good if they're not eating, because it's a bit of a distraction if they're eating their hay. Although I still can do it. I guess it's a bit like if we go and have a massage and we're eating our food, you know, eating our breakfast, our egg on toast you know you're not, you haven't quite got that connection have you um, it's important that they are rested for the rest of the day as I was saying to Tim I always let the vets know as well um, in your equine therapy there that, that handout I've given you 
it just tells you a little bit more that let me just see so obviously yeah you, you were saying about uh, the horses reactions and can it help aggressive horses yes it can it, very much so but you know some horses just do not like humans mm -hmm. because of what we've done to them uh, I was treating a stallion and my heart was saying or actually it might have been him saying get out of here but my heart was saying, get out, Joe, this is dangerous, because I've been there five minutes. He was 17 too, he's massive, massive horse. Um, and I started, I thought, I'm just not safe in here. So I went out and I could do healing from outside, but he tried to bite me about 60 times and it wasn't just a nice little nip, he would have took my head off. Um, and I really picked up that he had been very dominated by humans and he was dominating everyone he could and he really didn't like humans. Yeah. Uh, I haven't gone back there, um, not only, only because, not, not for any particular reason, I just haven't gone back and I would go back. Um, and whether he would respond, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that other Irish horse I was talking about, where, you know, they can be seriously beaten up, these yeah. horses. Um, as I say, broken within four weeks, and these, you know, I saw the video of, in fact, she showed, she sent me a picture of this horse, the haunted look in that poor horse's eyes, I thought, I thought I'd be able to help, and this is, you know, a bit, bit naive here, because he got in the stable, and he was that tense and traumatised, he's just pacing, 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 and I could feel it all, so I worked with what I could, and I cleared a lot, I know, um, he responded lots, he was shaking his head, all sorts. And um, I would have loved to have gone back and, you know, helped him some more, but for, for whatever reason his owner didn't ask me back, which was such a shame. And it grieved me for quite a long time, so I thought I could really help that horse. But generally, I mean, there, there are quite extreme cases, but generally, even if they are a bit aggressive, they do calm down very quickly very quickly. Do you have any questions? Um, I, I was fascinated to see the energy. Do you have a special camera for that? No, just my iPhone <laughs> and my handy little tripod from Amazon for £17. No. It, it actually shows the yeah, well I asked the universe for lights. I asked the universe if I could be a great healer as I was out walking the dogs. So just throw it out there. <laughs> Not expecting that I'd, you know, I'd get to where I, you know, healing like I am. Um, and as I say, I asked for the lights because I was, I was sat on the bed with my dog and I was thinking it would be really, really handy to see into the body. So yeah, I asked for the lights and then Patch is the one where you see the lights are really, really bright. Um, he was the one riding with the disabled. That's when they first came really powerfully that day. And then they started to come with horses that were very overwhelmed. And then they come with every horse now in varying strengths, whatever the weather. So it's, and of course, you know, what do you do with these lights? What's it mean? What's the colour? And of course, the owners want to know. Because the, the second time it happened, I wasn't even aware they were there until the owner said, well, what are, those, what are those lights? And I looked, well, what's that mean then? Um, why, is the, why are they that colour? <laughs> hmm, how do I answer this one? <laughs> well, I don't know, I said, I don't know. But, um, so yeah, I've been keeping an eye on it and I've, I know a little bit more about it now. Uh, the lights come and that part of the horse needs real healing and the light also changes so the more the more healing I'm doing in that area the light starts to change and it becomes more of a whiter light um, and with one of my horses a thun, um, blackberry oh I, I, I put it on another video because I did a couple of videos but the light went from quite a lilac and after I've been working on it for about five minutes went to more of a violet so it went very pinky and then sort of bluey and interestingly when I because I do training with the riders and teach them all about energy health mm. and um, 
tell them a little bit about energy healing and they see me in about heart to heart communication and they have a go at feeling the energy fields. Now I'll, I'll always entrain their hands at the beginning of the session so we run energy and then they started getting lights when they're doing the healing when they're with me we're exchanging frequencies and what we found as well is those people who have the gift of being able to hear the horse they, they, that frequency is going to other people who's in the group and they're hearing horses so there was one horse there um, he had his head in my in my arms Merlin, he used to work in the bullfighting ring and when we went to see him one of the girls got a flash of like a flag waving and, and a real like that and like you know felt oh something isn't right here at all um, and she didn't know anything about his history and it was when she said and then I said right I'll tell you about that afterwards and it was because he was in, in the bullfighting <coughs> ring and he actually said to, <coughs> said to, the, to another lass that he didn't really want to be in that stable where he was because he, he was right by the school and there was a lot of the children shouting and it was too much, reminded him too much of being in the bullfighting ring. Mm -hmm. um, um, when, when you do um, a healing with a human being, yes. some people are more receptive than others, obviously. Yes, yes. Is it the same with animals? But the degree in which they let the light in. Yes. Shows, yes. And are some animals yeah. more sensitive than others? They are, yes. I mean, I, I only work with cats and dogs. Yeah, yeah. Do you think horses are particularly sensitive? Uh, they're so individual. The warm bloods tend to be very sensitive. So there's one horse there. Um, oh, I wonder if I could go back and show you. She is so sensitive that when I go near her stable, she starts yawning. Um, and I can only do about 15, 20 minutes on her. Sorry, I'll lose my track if I go and look for that. Um, some horses are very, very shut down and it's very hard to connect with them. In actual fact, I'm going to go on here because I want to show you this little pony that was very, very disconnected and actually didn't want to be on the planet anymore. It was the first one we saw. Oh, what's, what are you not liking? Oh. And like with Nemo, you know, he's, he's carried a lot and held on to a lot for a long, long time. Now Amber, this first horse here, she takes on a lot of... a uh, lot of um, anguish and things from her owner. And I actually, she's the only horse I had to stop working on. I did 10 minutes and I felt so ill. Tummy ache, headache, I was taking on too much from her. And that was unsuccessful. I can't multitask here. So I do, what I do with her is like 10 minutes. So this little horse, I was doing some training on Saturday and my friend has, she's got about 50 horses. And this little chap, well, you could see his face on the last shot, how dejected he looked. And when I communicated with him, he was just, he didn't really want to speak to me. He didn't move his ears at all, I've lost him. Is that what's been to the <laughs> And when I collected energetically, I just felt such an overwhelming sadness and I just started crying. It was just awful. Anyway, I had another healer with me 
and there was a couple of girls so we all you know I was showing them how to fill the energy field so we all did some work with him and within 10 minutes uh, uh, that little pony was yawning and was engaging and at least we were getting some ear flickering and I have spoken to the owner and told her you know of how he how he's feeling because he's really not very good I really appreciate your um, sharing your experience of you know, how different horses react and perhaps your problems with some of them, and also your comment that, you know, are they all different? Because I've only given you to call a few horses, um, and it's probably the more placid ones that are used to humans. They're fine, they fall asleep, etc. But there's some that just, I just can't get anywhere yet. And at yeah. first I thought, because I've really worked with cats and dogs. I thought it must be me because I don't really know horses that well. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but now you're saying it it varies. Yes. Um, and also, I was wondering if that had something to do with, with what you were saying, the heart-to-heart -heart communication. Perhaps with those horses, I need to communicate first before doing the healing, which I've never thought of before. Yeah. I just go in and... Do you think that's... Oh, that's a really good idea. Too. Really good idea, yes. Yes. I know, because when you're first starting out, you don't know and you think it's you, don't you? And you think, but they are so individual. Yes, with cats and dogs, because I have an affinity with them, so they yes. come naturally, whereas with horses, there's probably an element of fear as well, because they're huge. Yeah. And yes. It's like... <laughs> And also, the, and they can feel that fear. Yes. Well, do you think some of them? Yeah. I mean, do you think that some of them are just naughty that they know this is coming? Do you think that they're just that some of them are just naughty that they know this is someone who doesn't really know horses and I'm going to? <laughs> <laughs> I, I still don't get that feeling that scare them a bit or something. I'm very reluctant for us to humanise by using the word naughty, mm. but um, there probably is. A, there could be an element of that. But the reason why they're like, yeah, the reason probably why they're like that is because they don't really like humans very much or how they've been treated. But of course, um, they, they have humour as well. But I think you just have to be very, very careful. I don't like people saying naughty horses, that, that term really, because you see it so much in the equine world. And they're not naughty, it's because they're in so much blooming pain most of the time. They are mischievous. They are. Oh, they are. Children. They are indeed. Are so, I mean, they are really like naughty children. Yes. You know, they stamp their feet when you don't feed them. Yes. And they they stick their heads through the car window and try and eat anything inside. <laughs> Absolutely. Mischievous. Yes. Yes. I, I, indeed, and I have found the healing brings out that part of them even more and I think probably part of that will be because they're in less pain and it's like us if we're in less pain then we're we're much more able to engage and be humorous and be exuberant so I think there's an element of that but I think it opens up a connection with an unseen connection between human and horse and it's not just with horses I've had it with the hamster fang the hamster <laughs> I, I'm interested with with the um, with the connection and 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 it's just making me think of one instance um, I was actually um, specifically well quite a big reason I went to Canada was to see the, the orcas and I was told that they very much oh. um, and communicate with with visions with pictures yes and there was two instances and the set where, um, you know, I really was giving it my all, but, you know, I was there for them. Yes. Uh, one, uh, the first time, you know, they all sort of suddenly appeared. But then there was a second time where we were following them, and I was really, I actually told him that I had a bit of lapis lazuli, and, and, and that I really, was, I wanted to give them, give them a gift. Yeah. And, and I told the guy on the phone, and it could have been all coincidence, but, um, but, I wasn't sure if I was going to see them. The wind was up, and the, and I'd been I'd been crying underneath the mask, you know, because I was like, oh, you know, I've come here to see them, you know, and I've sent this prayer, dear, dear sentient beings, you know, I'm here for you. I've come to see you. And, and in the end, because long story short, it was one minute before we had to leave. After we we're about to leave to head back to 
the port, and the male um, came out of the group and came and swam underneath our boat and came up right in front of us, purposely, um, out of completely out of what they were doing. Yes. And that was after I had said, you know, I've got a gift for you, mm. and then I just got to do it. Wonderful. So, so, but what I was thinking was about with seeing in pictures, because some animals see in pictures and others, some animals, like you said, with feeling, with connection, connection, and then they sometimes have showed your people pictures or yeah. feelings. Yes, yes. I mean, we're all energy, energetically connected, aren't we? And every organism has the torus field. And so he would hear your frequency, he would hear you. And this is where I tell riders, the horses can hear your thoughts, so be aware of that, especially when I'm dealing, helping them with confidence. Ponies can be a little bit... Cheeky. 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 Indeed. Indeed. It's the condition of also, with the conditions and environments that are kept in, and also the conditions um, yes. of the uh, the owners, or so you know, yes. the owners, you know, how they ride them and how they. Yes, uh, how absolutely. They, if, I mean, if they're having a bad day and then they go down to the stables to sort of work it off, often that 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 could almost transfer or trans. Yes. Uh, just as an energy, it doesn't. Yes. You know, I mean. So, yes. So this, this, that, that, that's all the condition. Yes, and that's one of the reasons why I do the training because I didn't, I couldn't ever just go and do some healing and then walk away because I wanted to educate and because I've found out an awful lot about the energy health of ourselves and what affects it. You know, um, physical trauma, toxins, and diet, um, and then of course your behaviour, perception, yeah. so their mental health. So I look, I, I, my training's called equine healing and holistic healthcare. So I incorporate all of that in because what I found was horses that are shod, they've got so much discomfort in their shoes and of course the reason is they're not supposed to have a bit of metal on their foot. You know, the, the hoof is there to take the impact, so it's elastic and of course you put metal on it, you know. So, uh, but more and more ho horse riders are, are going barefoot. Mm. Um, it's the same with the bit. I can feel very, a lot of discomfort around their chin and the mouth because mm. of the bit and probably the nose band as well. They have an awful lot in their heads, as particularly the dressage horses, and they're overbent. And yeah. Oh, well, yeah, we have our work cut out sometimes when we go... Um, but the breeding, the breeding, or the blood lines of the breeding... Yes, or absolutely. We've, they're very, some of the horses are very, very narrow um, under the breast and they're, all, they're pinching, um, and that's because of all the breeding. So they have a lot of problems, a lot of horses have a lot of problems in the breast area mm -hmm. and where the vertebra meet there. When you think about the film War Horse, there, there must have been thousands of horses that were traumatised because they were used in war. Mm. I just wonder what happened to them. They probably shot or something. It's one film I could never watch. Yeah. No, I didn't want to, because I knew I'd cry for an hour and a half. I would have done it honestly. Can't do it. Can't do it. I read this brilliant book, I can't remember who it's by, I actually have it at home if anyone's interested. But Past Lives of Horses. Mm. And, um, and the connection between the rider and the horse can carry on um, over lifetimes. So, mm. you know, it could be a, a night yes. and a horse and, and the traumas that you have to work through together. Yes. Have you come across a book like that? I mean, no, but I'll, I'll I know, I, I've come across reincarnation and all, yeah, truly believe that. It drew my attention because, um, you know, I told you I used to work at Cable Manor College and, and I used to go out and watch the shy horses in the field and one day <clears> three of them just came up to me. And I just somehow had the idea, whether it's true or I imagined it, it was like war horses. Just yeah. coming up, all three of them. Really? Yeah, and that's what I thought. I wonder if they have that kind of past life thing. Yes, so yes. That's, that's when and then I found yes. this book, which was fascinating. Yeah. But the other thing I was going to ask was, watching these horses in the field, um, what I noticed that you can probably explain to me, that their auras were all interconnected because they're herd animals. 
Yes. Mm. It was like the slightest pull on one, it would affect the other. Yes. They could, like, even if they couldn't see each other, it was a, a group aura. Yes. Mm. How would you work with that? Because the only horses I ever see now are passing the travellers' horses in the fields or something. So it's like, do you, do you ever work that way with a whole group of them or two or three? Um, no, but I have, not only because I haven't had the opportunity as yet, um, I, I was contacted by a lady who wanted me to go and see her herd, yeah. but generally I see the individual horse, uh, but you know, it's something that um, I, I talk to the riders about, about the energetic connection between the, not just them and the horse, but the environment and the horse and all the horses, of course they're prey animals, they fight or flight or free, fight, flight, freeze, and um, very sensitive. And yeah, they do pick up a, on our human emotion. They carry a lot of it. In fact, um, a couple of ladies who were on uh, one of my train days, they really knew that you know, when they lost their husbands, their horse carried that grief for them. Um, but it's so there, there's the emotional aspect. And you know, when you think about it, when we get dogs, we generally keep them for life. So many horses, they're bought, they're sold, they're bought, they're sold. It's just grim. They're carrying so much. So, you know, it, but I think, you know, it's educating people and for them to be aware of, I mean, I must tell you about Fang, the hamster. I only went round to have my, I, yeah, it was quite funny. I only went round to have my eyelashes extended and my friend said, I've got a hamster. I said, so I said, oh, but I've got to see this hamster. And she said, it's not very well. And I got it two days ago. And she said, it doesn't really want to wake up. And when it does, it'll only open one eye. So I said, let me see. So I was like this. Oh, I know. The amount of, my hands were bright, vibrating so much. I thought, this hamster is seriously not well. And I was doing this and I, there was so much energy going on, I was saying to myself, please do not spontaneously combust. Please, <laughs> please do not. Exploding don't let me kill the hamster. Please don't. And, and Joe was saying, I, I don't think he's going to survive, you know. And my daughter doesn't. And I was thinking, I don't. But anyway, I worked on it. And it, it survived for about half, uh, half an hour on this hamster. There was so much energy come from the hamster, more than sometimes I feel in a part of a horse. Anyway, off I went, and then a couple of days later, she contacts me, she says, my God, there's been an amazing transformation. <laughs> it's perky. In fact, it is, it's like a superhuman hamster now. He's not even anything remotely like a hamster. He gets up early in the morning, he's waiting for his food, he's demanding treats. <laughs> and do you know what? I went round to have my eyelashes extended again last night, and she says, well, not what he's doing now is that he puts all his food in his little wheel already and he puts his poo out the cage. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. It's just, he's just transformed. And it just shows you, I mean, I had rats and I, I have to say, and it was before I knew all about this sort of thing and I would get, and I don't like, animals in cages, so he was the airing cupboard rat. So he had a cage, but he didn't live in the cage, he lived in the airing cupboard. And I'd get my yoga mat out, I'd be doing this, and then the rat would be doing this next to me. And I realised now, you know, I thought that is just amazing. I, I suppose that was the first time I really, really realised how intelligent and sentient the, the creatures are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rats are known to have their own intelligence. Uh, yes, and they will rescue their friends before they get the chocolate, because I was reading about an experiment they did. Chocolate there, their mate was trapped, and he actually went and rescued his mate, before, and then they both went and got the chocolate. So, and this man was saying, would they have empathy? And I was thinking, well, of course they have empathy, you know. Animals have feelings, but it's amazing how many people don't realise. <laughs> But then, you know, I look back to me and I was pretty amazed about my rat and he was, you know, and it's only working with horses when I was younger that you realise the different personalities they have. And I guess if you're not around animals, you don't know. I'm sure you'd agree, Joe, that even, like you say, working with insects, yes. the same thing as yes. when people can say, talking about asking ants to leave. Yes, you know, yes. Just ask them. Absolutely. <laughs> find, find out, you know, 
How brilliant. I used, home, I used to teach in a special school near here. My classroom was like this. It was a hut. They put me away from the school so I could do this damage with them. <laughs> but I loved that because I had a really independent space. And we had the biggest wasp, wasp you've ever seen. And they used to use my room as a flight path. So they'd fly in the door, because I had the door open, and fly out the window. Well, of course, a lot of special needs kids, you know, they were frightened. Yes. And they'd flap or they'd get excited or they'd scream. And I said, this is not what we do with wasps. So there's a whole cohort in Enfield of children now. What you say is, brother wasp, brother wasp, thank you for coming to see us. Would you kindly leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And so these kids who were frightened realised that they didn't have to be frightened. Oh. Yes. And that they yes. Yeah. It did backfire on me once when <laughs> I had a supply teacher in there. <laughs> and I walked through the door and the kids all ran up to me and said, Miss, 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 Mr. King did it, Mr. King did it, you must do it. And he said, What? What have they done? I said, I don't know. What have you done? He said, Well, I just killed a baby. <gasps> So did you say that to the to that the teacher, brother B, brother B, yeah. do one? That's why if they're all having because we don't kill anything. Oh. No, absolutely not. So um, anyway, that teacher lets something somewhere around here. Yeah. <laughs> on the planet, there's kids that aren't frightened wasps oh, or bees. Really. I mean, my son's thirty, right? And he 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 came home the other day. He's got this problem. He doesn't know what to do with the spider because the spider that lives, lives in his van is worried that he hasn't got enough food in the van but he doesn't want to put him out because then he'll get cold but it's, uh, we're all like it but it's lovely and it came from my father and I, I think you know the more we can teach the young people about you know the beauty of the insects in fact uh, you know Tim knows this but one of the first healings I did was with a bee um, you know sometimes I think they get caught up in your house don't they and my son had found the bee and it was summer evening we put them out on the patio and you know what all night I kept worrying about that bee I kept waking up thinking so first thing in the morning I went down and he was out there still he weren't really moving about much so <laughs> I picked him up put him up in the palm of my hands and at this, uh, I carried him over to, the, over to the grass, and at this point I, I was thinking in the back of my mind, this is going to end up in a, in a euthanasia, I can see that it's going to end up with a brick over his head, because this ain't going to work. This is what I was thinking. No, no. Uh, anyway, energy. Put in energy. And after about 20 seconds, <laughs> off we shot. And it was like, oh, it worked. <laughs> So it may, you know, uh, well, yeah, I, I thought if I can do that with the bee, that's just absolutely brilliant. So, um, and like, you know, th th they come to you, don't they? Uh, and I've got a dog who's a healer dog. And he always likes you to hold his paw because he transfers healing that way. My friend who <coughs> speaks to... He's a healer hound. He's a healer dog. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's funny because when I do any healing on him, it's like we're... The, the energy goes a bit wrong because all his ha hair stands up on end and he sneezes. He just can't seem to cope with the energy I'm putting out because I think of the energy he's putting out. It's well weird. <laughs> but um, I was told by my friend who speaks to spirits that Bilbo would find something that, and when he, on the walk and when I, Bilbo did, I'd have to go because that, that creature would need me. I was walking, you know, the following day sniffing about by a rabbit hole. I expected to see a rabbit. <coughs> Tra deep trauma, no, it was this little butterfly. 
and it was it obviously pupated out but it was when we had a really cold wind so probably a couple of weeks ago three weeks ago and he just needed a bit of healing so I did a little bit of healing on the butterfly and yeah, it, was all, it was absolutely fine so yeah easy job <laughs> a bit easier than a horse <laughs> well it was not easier but you know so yeah I mean, you were asking about how long it takes with the horse uh, generally it, it really depends how how much I'm feeling. I just want to, I know we're going for a break at nine, aren't yes. we? Yes. We're going to yes, lovely. I'll just find um, this beautiful doggy who has laminitis, if I can, if I can work this. Nearly there, nearly there. There's Dougie. He's such a cutie. Yeah, he's only five, so. Where does he go and get his hair cut? I don't want to be arranged. It could be arranged. So, when I first went to see him, I, I didn't know whether I'd be able to help a horse with laminitis at all. Um, you know, felt all around his body and he had loads of tension all in his body. And what I do, I have a chart, so depending on the vibration I feel in my hands, you know, if there's a lot, I, I, I rate it between a naught and ten. So his first session I was getting like levels of six to seven, seven to eight down his legs. But I could, I managed to dissipate quite a lot of it in that session, and literally within less than half an hour, his owner said to me, "He's walking so much better around the stable." So I was, that was that was very good. So you're dissipating the energy out. You're not leaving it in. No. no. So it's dissipating out away from the from the. Uh, well, who knows what I'm doing really. Because obviously it's entrainment, isn't it? So when there's a, you need 1.4 volts in a cell. So if there's not enough in a cell, you get, it becomes yeah. not moving. So high frequency, so it comes up through, and of course that's why they get the tingling. I, I, you, know, you know with humans you get tingling, don't you? Popping, pulling, sometimes it hurts as well. So the horses are feeling that. Um, so when I say clearing, I mean when I've been maybe healing for about half an hour, when I go back to it, I can't feel it in my hands. So it's obviously <coughs> flowing through. Flow. Less, less. Less. Yeah. yeah, it's obviously flowing nicely through the cells. Um, it could be a flow either way. It could be a flow either way. Yeah. Yes, and that's, you know, your comments have gratefully received him because I'm no expert with it, so you think that's what's going out as well. It's because, as I'm sure, like this, with humans, with the horses, obviously the energy fields come out a long way, and sometimes, you know, I can be working quite closely, but then, especially if it feels crackly, I know I need to just come come back and bring it right out and you can feel it all in their energy fields and sometimes I'll you know there's there's a lot to work with and you can't do it all in one but session at all. I can I can tell the difference with so yeah emotional tension it feels in my hands just a different sort of, it's lighter, it's less dense fuzziness. Whereas when they've got arthritis or something, I often, my hands often ache as well when I'm working with it. Do you find that? It's a bit cramping. Yeah. Yeah, a bit cramping. yeah. Do you find that joints. the bones? Yeah, joints. Yeah. So, so I guess it's very similar with, with how we get with humans. Um, do you, do you work with colours as well? Do you, with, say, with emotions or either giving or receiving? No, I haven't tried that actually. No. With regards to emotional stuff, uh, uh, the horses hold a lot of emotional stuff in their root. 
and at the back so I often do quite a lot of clearing there and every horse has a lot in their tail you'd be surprised it's often about uh, uh, it's about this far down and then about three foot down um, I mean he didn't have much but then you wouldn't expect him to he's had a nice hut he's got a nice home he's young but he obviously was hold on to a lot so anyway the really good news about Dougie as well the fact that he was getting better the vet had seen him on the Monday I went to see him on the Wednesday the vet went back on the Friday to do x-rays she couldn't believe the difference in him oh. and she wanted to know what was been going on and uh -huh. so um, Natalia told the vet all about the therapy and she was really impressed and she said you know as a vet we can't recommend but we can cert I can certainly you know mm. suggest mm. which is a huge breakthrough mm. yeah. um, did you? My cat was really, really ill and we never thought that she would live. And so I gave a healing and all my friends that were healers came gave a healing. And, we, and the vet said, bring her back in two weeks. We took her back and went, oh, she's still alive. Oh, we didn't expect it. And then she said, we're well, going to have a look. And she came back she said, what have you been doing? <laughs> she's fine. She's absolutely, what have you been doing? So I said, well, oh, she's had some healing. <laughs> And they said, well, whatever you do, don't stop it because it's fantastic. And she was she was on death's door. She'd been attacked by a badge of things, but she was very badly. But the vet was very open to it. She said, well, whatever you're doing, just get all your friends around. Yes. You're doing really well. Yes, yes. And that's lovely when yeah. it's, it's received like that rather than dismissed as pocus pocus or something. Yes, indeed. Isn't it superb? Um, you're working hands on or hands off mostly. Uh, like you're working mostly hands off. Yes. Mm. Sometimes when there's too much energy tra transaction going on and it's just too much for them, I'll put my hands on. But when I do, I have to make sure I do it like that first because if I do it like that, they'll get sparked. Um, so I always just put sort of try and reduce the energy a bit like that, and then I'll work like that it's they get it yeah it's it's less intense for them i wonder whether this has anything to do with what i just said that uh, with a group of horses they all seem to be connected so maybe they just do have huge auras because they're so used to picking up everybody else's yes yes the very 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 dead their nature is very gentle they're very gentle nature and yes. the whole thing is, you know, when you approach a horse, um, the horse called Ruben, he was a cross between a, uh, an Arab and an Appaloosa. And um, we, we used to stand, um, and he'd be off in the field, and he would, he, 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 we eventually we got the, um, the owner to do various different things. She was the only one that could call him over, but he could look up when he was coming in for him. He could look up and he'd look at you, completely ignore you, put his head back down again. Or, and what we used to do is, I said, I said to him, look, before you go there, just um, just call him uh, through through mind, you know, open up his yes. heart and call him through. And he used to, he used to, it made a difference and he, and he, and he came along. And so we were, yeah. well, I, I, um, I never, I never went hands on with him. She was always there, and I never went hands on with him. But I used to do like a distant, a kind of a distant, because um, yeah. the energy. What we believed is that the energy of the horse is the same energy as we've got. It's just in a different form, and so everything in between that is connecting as well. It's just it's formless. The in between is the or the unseen is formless. Yes. So yes. And, and everything takes a different form, and so we with environment and with uh, various other things, he our energy makes a different however. Uh, as, as, as wide as a, a horse's aura is, that a human being's aura is as well. And if you, like I say, if you've, yes. got, right, if you've had trauma yourself, or you've just had, you've, had, you've had different thoughts that you know wouldn't, you know, negative thoughts or something, and then you go to an animal or go yeah. to a horse, yes. then they're liable to stay in the middle of the field and put their head down rather than 
you know, if you open if you open that auric field up, and then you you know, and it's just a gentle kind of way of connecting with the horse. You know, they can be right <laughs> up the right up the field. Yes. And, and they come towards you. Know, they come towards you. You know, they might be out of sight. Yes. But, you know, you can be there. It could be part partly. It could be behavioural. You know, the, mm. you know, at a timing. You know, mm. timing and behavioural. They could hear someone's you know, uh, footprints or, you know. Yes, you know, yes. Foot, foot, um, foot stomping. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, certainly, it's the connection. It's that connection yeah. that we've got as well. Yeah. You know? um, and they, they, they do take on so much for us. I, I have to say, when as I'm going to a healing in my car, I connect energetically. Say, I'm on my way. <laughs> um and that actually is is really quite useful. Um, so how is how is he then? Has, has, is, is he mostly in recovery? Is he? he is. Well, yeah. I mean, he responded so well for that first session. She could reduce his painkiller, um, and I went back um, the following week, which was last week. And when I started feeling it, he was so much better in his body. He released all that tension that he was holding, all, you know, all that tight because my everything hurts. And I'd, in that first session as well, when I'd been working on his legs, he couldn't <coughs> tolerate it very much. That, you know, he kept trying to bite me. This is too much. But I needed to do a bit, you know, to help him a bit. So I just, did, I'd do maybe a minute or so, and then I'd move, um, and then come back and do another minute. And he kept pouring and pulling his legs up. Second time I could work on those legs a bit more. And then, was it like yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Yesterday morning I could work on them lots more. As you, as you could see, well, not, you, not that you've seen the whole session, but I was, I was working on his legs a good half an hour. Um, yeah, so he's doing very well. I mean, the only complicating factor in a way is this had to be shod because of how his foot is. And of course, you're putting shoes into a laminating foot, but it's six or one half. The day. It's hard because it's, if you didn't, how, how his foot was sitting on the ground, it wasn't. Yes, yes. So, um, but he is doing really, really well. So, um, you know, it surprised me I've not treated a horse with laminitis before, so, you know, I was well thrilled. As I say, these things you never know, do you? I, I would have thought there'd be some vets like Richard Allport who would be interested in employing a healer. And he, he gives home up with his animals. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've. I mean, I've not had much success so far, but saying that, you know, the vet who has seen Dougie has improved. She works at a really big equine veterinary place, and it only needs one vet just to, you know, that I can engage with, like any of us, you know, if we just get that one that then allows us access in. Even if you could get sort of a, a group of veterinary nurses or a group of equine people that you could you could give that information the way you're giving that absolutely i've been desperate to get in there i've i've practically let me show you because if i know if they gave me any animal for 10 minutes i they'll see what happens mm -hmm. they'll see a difference <laughs> uh, give me a vet <laughs> 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 I started banging on about quantum mechanics. I'd lost him. I'd lost them. They'd gone to sleep in the first half an hour. So I thought, right, you did that wrong, Joe. So next time I ran energy through their hands before we even started talking. Sure. And of course, as soon as they feel the energy moving in yeah. their hands, yeah. you've got them. And then I show them how to see the energy in the sky. I say, look at the sky and see the energy. Mm -hmm. I just said, just let your eyes, you know, uh, come out of focus. I don't tell them what to look for. And you know what? They can all see it. Mm -hmm. and they see all the sparkles and of course the pony club an absolute joy because as soon as you put your hands on them they're, oh, they're, oh, they're all tingly they're so receptive the kids mm -hmm. and then they're all they're doing it between each other and and then they can feel the, the horse's energy fields really really well 
and you know, they're just so open to it. And it's, and I've actually developed a pony club badge. I've got my delivery, um, except I missed it today, but my delivery of the badge. Because um, I'm lucky that my friend who I've practiced on these or her horses, she does the pony club. So I've been able to get into the pony club in that route, but mm. I'm trying to get into nationwide pony club. <laughs> <laughs> That's my aim. I need to ask the universe, don't yeah. I, for a bit of help. Yeah. Well, I mean, it obviously are to <laughs> yeah. you know, to, to get that light is amazing. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I think I'll, I'll ask the universe to help me with the pony club. Mm. I hadn't thought about that one. Oh. Right. Huh? Cosmic Audrin. Yes, that's it. Cosmic Audrin. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so I think it's time for our tea. Shall I take the other one, Tim? Thanks. Have you? I oh, will have a few more because honestly, I've got so many of them. I, I, I had a real. There you go, John. <laughs> I, hello. I'm Simon. Hello, Simon. Simon. Of course it is. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice I to have meet a you. Strange reverse sleeping pattern. I'm like a nocturnal animal. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah. I thought. I'll, no, it's If I turn the lights off, that will get people's attention, won't it? Yeah. Take your seats, resume your seats, ladies and gentlemen. I thought I'll just play a little video. If would you like to see another little video, a little clip? Now, now when the horse is released through yawning, it's the most, it's not normal sort of yawning, it's like almost they're going to expel the alien. And you'll see from this horse, it's most peculiar. Um, and often I've noticed a, a, a prelude to them yawning is that they'll often put their muzzle on my hands and then and sometimes they go as if to bite me but it's it's like like that you'll see I'm not I can't do a good impression of a horse having a yawn <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask the universe for that one, shall I? Yeah, I'll ask the universe for that one. So this is Taurus. He was a young man who's, who came from the, the Highlands. Um, so I'd worked on him for about half an hour in the stable, and then I started doing some more. Now you can see it's starting to come up. The alien is appearing. That's super. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, wow. Well done, Matt. Well done. Well done. <laughs> you are doing my business. Yes, you are. You are doing so well. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> All I'm saying is bless his heart and uh, here we go, more's coming. More. It reminds me of Shrek the donkey, Taurus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has an aura of Shrek, doesn't he? Someone said you ob someone obviously left some tablets in the stable. So he looks like he's gurning, doesn't he? You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought that was quite a funny comment. But um, yes. Do you know what breed of horse he is? Is he a particular breed? He's a high, some sort of Highland horse. But of course he'd he'd been with his family. He was with his mum and sister, and they brought him down to Cambridge and. Um, I obviously brought quite a lot of tension with him, oh, okay. but yeah, he's uh, yeah. 
So the re yawning is just a release then? It's a release in tension? Or it's yeah. Yeah. It's... Uh, I don't suppose you've heard of the Masterson technique, but um, it's Jim Masterson. He uses like acupressure points, and um, you know it's a similar sort of thing that releases tension as well. And you know one of the big biggest releases the horses do is this yawning, and they also roll back the second eye. They've got a second eye and, uh, and they roll it back. Yeah, the eye they, it rolls back. It's quite interesting. But yeah, they often have this real, like him, you know, he just sort of depicts it beautifully. Um, now, I just wanted to tell you about heart focused breathing um, that to do because it also can help you do the heart to heart communication. And you can do it with your animals. So heart-focused breathing is when you imagine breathing from your heart space, the centre of your heart. You breathe in a regular fashion, so you breathe in for five and then breathe out for five. And then what you do is put a positive emotion there, so either care, gratitude, uh, love. Now the Heart Mass Institute did some research with horses and humans, so they attached um, horses the horses to a heart monitor, heart rate variability monitor and humans and it was seven humans who hadn't seen these horses so obviously they did a control before they met and then they got them to meet and they asked the humans to do this heart focused breathing so breathing from the heart and feeling love for the horse to see what happened to their to their hearts. Now when you normally do heart focused breathing your frequency goes to about 0.1 hertz and they found when they did it with the, with the horses it went much lower to like 0.001 hertz which was remarkable and they also found that the horse's heart energy affected the human's heart energy 30 seconds before it actually changed. And the Heart Mass Institute have um, did some research, this is actually Mabel Mabel is the dog belonging to one of the heart maths uh, scientists and his son Josh and they did a similar experiment so Mabel was in the lab um, Josh came into the room uh, did the heart focused breathing while feeling love for Josh and their hearts entrained together there you see this is their hearts entraining together so you can do that with your pet and this is uh, when the lady had to go, uh, one of the ladies who was here, sorry I don't know her name because her dog she Jill. felt was missing, yeah Jill, she picked up, you know her dog was missing her and I mean they do get separation anxiety, I mean this is when Josh left the room, this is Mabel's heart rate, you know it's going off the wall there, she's not very happy that he's gone. So that heart focused breathing is really useful for getting into your heart space and connecting with your animal. I did leave a handout for you about heart to heart communication on your chair. Um, and it's, I mean if those of you who meditate and quieten your mind, it's all about quieting your mind, getting out of your head, going into the heart space and then connecting, asking to connect. Now you all should you always must ask to connect with their heart. And I say I obviously did the heart connection with the horses, but one of the first heart connections I had was with a tree, randomly. Just walking the dogs and then leading on a tree thing doing in fact perhaps in my heart focused breathing thinking, Oh I love your tree, what a lovely tree and my heartbeat changed and I almost felt like the tree was swaying and I just knew that I'd connected energetically with the tree. It was quite remarkable. Um, I thought well I'll try that again with a different tree and so I did and each tree has makes my heart feel different and, and so you know you can try that and the Heart Mass Institute are doing research on the trees at the minute. Um, and seeing about consciousness with the trees because you know many people you know feel that 
rocks have consciousness, you know, this consciousness is an awful lot. So yeah, and I think Judy Dench did a really good documentary about trees. Yes, yes, so, and you can try it with the insects as well. And we were talking about, um, about asking the ants to leave, just to let you know that works for spots too, so if you have a spot on your face, I don't know if you've tried it. Outdance. <laughs> no. <laughs> Outdance spot. I think Shakespeare got their decorum. No, 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 no. Well, my uh, my friend had a spot. She'd had it for about three months, and I said, for a start, you need to stop calling it spot. You need to call it something nice. So something soft. <laughs> you know, give it a name and say, you know. Please, Spot, you can leave now. And she tried it, and her Spot went the following day. And it's about connecting to our bodies. And I've used it myself, and that obviously that's how I healed myself as well. I moved the energy, but I also, for a start, stopped calling pain, pain, because it's such a hard word. I called it like a splosh. It's just a sensation, splosh, so something soft. Mm. And it's just changing the mind to think about it differently as well. I thought I'd just throw that one in. <laughs> Do you have questions about any of this? I was looking at, uh, there's, there's a chart that you've got there. Um, and you, when, when you go to visit each horse, oh, yeah, yeah. you have, um, you have uh, different, uh, you have different diagnoses from each horse and you put them down on a chart there. Yeah. Right, so yes, yes indeed, yeah. because it helps me to keep a record of how they're progressing. So for instance, Dougie, when I first went to see him, you know, I would rate it, I, I rate it out of the 0 to 10 of, of what I'm feeling in my hands. So on his legs, I put it at about a 7 to 8, 10 being the yeah, most... I, I, yeah, ten, 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 ten being, being the highest, highest vibration. So what you get at ten? What what does that mean? Well, it's, this is only my. This yeah. is what I've made so up. For me, yeah. I'd be extremely crackly and okay. almost sparks, well, which I have had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a nine. <laughs> he was a, he was a combusting, combusting, yeah, yeah, he was a nine. But I'd say sparks, and when I actually see sparks, I put my hands over a horse's kidney area, and I saw sparks, and just, and that I'd put that at a ten. But that's that's my max at the minute. But I'm not, you know, I see what the universe sends along. But yeah. Okay, so that's the maximum, and, and the one is the minimum. Yeah. One, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it helps me keep a record. Yeah, no, that's, that's really um, and also, I have my little chart about the releases they have. So, for instance, Dougie on the tenth, they he, he flared his nostrils. Um, he had some itching of his body, quivering and rippling of his coat, fidgeting. He kept pulling his legs up, and he held his breath as well. So breath changing. Dropping head and neck, tightening, contracting neck, uh, tensing and untensing the, the jaw, because they hold so much in there as well. Um, so, say, licking, chewing, moving the tongue. That's why you've seen some of them with their tongues poking out, and you, you saw how after yawning they often. And a prelude to yawning is they move their jaws about and lick and chew. Shaking head and shaking the body, snorting, sneezing, blowing out, yawning, rolling back the second eye, releasing from the sheath and moving wind and having motions. I mean, that, that, that's normally, initially, they, their tummy rumbles and then they start, you can so see the energy moving through their body. On the second visualisation, you would go, you would take one of those sheets and you would put that, again, you would, um, there would be a, 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 a Probably be a slight variation with there being behaviour yes. the second time. Yes, indeed. Put that down, and you could, yes. you, could you get any kind of distinction or patterns emerging uh, from it, or you, you, you're not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see what areas are resolving. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or, and calming down, mm. uh, and if there's any changes in change for the worse. 
as well. Um, and obviously I include the lights now because I get the lights. So that's always handy. You see, with this horse, um, with Dougie, his left foot was, had more laminitis in it than the right. But when I was feeling his legs, his right was in quite a lot of trouble because of the compensation for obviously keeping off that leg, putting all the strain. So down his front uh, behind, he had lots up there. In fact, I was doing a lot of work on him yesterday because it, you could see all the lights were down there as well. Um, uh, it's really handy as well because I don't need to know anything about the horse and I'd rather not know anything about the horse before I go and I'm sure you'd probably yeah. find this sometimes as well because often even with a human it's like for instance my son he, he will say he's got pain in his elbow but actually that's not where I needed to do the healing it was further up his arm you know that's where he had more and it's the same for the horses. You know, if the owners, you know, say, we think it's this, think it's that. And I'd much rather them not say. And then they can see as well um, that I know what I'm doing, really. Or that I can, you know, I can feel it. Of course, um, you can never diagnose, but working with the owner, you can find out why things might be. So Dougie, he had a lot between his stifle and these top back legs. Um, so I did a lot of work on the first session and what he'd actually done was he'd jumped out of the stable and got his back legs oh, cool. caught so and he was obviously still carrying quite a lot from there as well so I mean it's really handy isn't it all, it's been able to feel all this what's uh, heart mass facilitator Ah, uh, that is the heart maths facilitator is basically um, I've got a certificate where I can teach people heart focused breathing. Oh, I see, right, right, right. Yeah. From the Heart Maths Institute. Oh, I right, mean, that's the name of the institute, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I, you know, with all the healing, you know, whatever modality you're looking at, it's all, uh, they all say about how important the heart is, don't they? Um, and so I found out a lot about the heart and I, I, I just wanted to share this with you about the heart. Um, the Heart Maths um, Institute did some... Are they in the States or...? They, they, yeah, but they're, they're also in the UK. Okay. Yeah. They did some research on the heart. Uh, they hooked up humans to monitors. They had the um, one on a body monitor, a heart monitor, and one on the head as well. And what they showed them was a series of random images that would come up on a computer. So some of these images that would come up were negative, so things like car accident victims or snake attacks, and others were like of sunsets and flowers, to see what the heart did and what the brain and the body did. And they, they, they noticed how you know, the heart responded in a certain way to the negative images, it always responded in a particular way and then it's responded in a different way to the negative images, sorry the positive, so. Um, but what really surprised them was the heart responded three seconds before the eyes saw the image. The heart responded first, then the uh, let me get this right, then the head, then the body, or it might be the then the body, then the head. So it just that, that it proved how intuitive the heart is um, and how, you know, that sixth sense that we talk about, how you can trust it. So very useful to know. And they also found out that females are more, more intuitive than males. Um, and one other thing to share with you, you know, NASA found out after 9-11 how... Um, it changed the electromagnetic Good. yeah and so when I'm working with the riders I give them these little snippets because it makes them open up their awareness to you know all the different things that, that, that you know the changes you about tsunamis, don't they? Before mm. it actually hits, mm. the animals mm. move yes yes see all those animals going up the hill yeah <laughs> yeah it's going to be a wave. yeah when yeah. so 9-11 
it, because of the huge outpouring of empathy yeah. and compassion around the world, it altered the magnetic field of the Earth. Wow. And that, I think, really set them on the road to... It was recorded by NASA, really set them on the road to looking at the impact of the heart. I mean, you know the... Um, I can't remember what effect they call it, but when you've got a, 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 a few meditators meditating for peace in a city, how the crime rate is reduced massively. So, you know, it's, we, we all make a difference, don't we? If you look, if you look at what you were suggesting um, with, the, um, with the Americans, what they, what they discovered was that two or three days before, it was almost like the consciousness already knew that something was coming. Really? And, yeah, I, I, huh. yeah, yeah. It was consciousness, so, that, so um, it was uh, a, almost like a preconceived uh, idea and that was that was to do with the heart. It was to do with the change. And you know, there was also, if you look at the the world's got like electromagnetic or different fields, electromagnetic fields. Yes. They also say that the core, the core of the Earth, uh, throws up a field. So from the from the centre of the core, it throws yes. up and out. And this is what we're, we're all uh, very very much uh, affected by that. Yes. And our heart. Our heart and, and our heads. If we get, we have our heart and our head linked together. So you say, oh, well, there's a consciousness in the mind, and you say, yeah, there's a there's a, a beat. What they say is a beta consciousness in the mind, which uh, goes out. It goes out, and, and and we're able to do day to day things and keep our heart beating and keep keep our bodily functions. You know, keep uh, you know, keep support, You know, survival. Yeah. And you have the the conscious, the second conscious, which is in the heart. Yes. And the, and the two linked together then expands out, and that's how we get yes. that um, that electric. And that's how those fields start to yeah. expand out, and, uh, and we're picking up all the time because of our vibrations. We're picking up. Uh, feelings and we're picking up thoughts, thoughts that have gone out. We are, have gone out. yes, and, you know, yes. Energy, so, yeah, I don't know if you've come across access consciousness, and 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 they say exactly the same. You know, we eighty percent of what um, we're thinking in here aren't our own thoughts. So you know, you have to do like you can do clearing things like. Um, any thoughts, feelings, or emotions that don't belong to me, I'll return to sender. I mean, that's one that you can do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's effective. It just, I mean, with, with, with most of the, the shamanic side of things, they would say that there's, there's it's almost like a veil or a, a filter. And what you'd say is, yes. whatever, we, whatever emotions we've got, whatever, that, that filter, once, once we put those, once we put those, thoughts out, it goes through that filter and everything, all the universe, everything can cope with it because it's so much bigger than what we are, it's so much bigger than those things. Yes. Whatever thoughts we have, whatever feelings we have, uh, whatever way they are, it, it's about, get, you, you get rid of those feelings, you get them up into the universe and the universe copes with it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mm. judge and it doesn't condemn and it doesn't yeah. do any of those things. It's, it's, yeah. it's completely neutral. It's what we've got going on within our intention and in our hearts. Yes. That then that we expand that out. And uh, you know, if we've got the right intention, then we get right in the hands. <coughs> you know, yes. we're able to. We're able to. You know, you ask for you ask for light in your hands, and you get light in your hands. Yes. 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 And you know. I've just been working so much on, I mean one thing I say to myself in the morning is ego, you're not required, heart, you're in charge. And things like I live my life with ease, joy and grace and that's what, I used to be so clumsy. I, and I used to lose things. Oh, I was a nightmare. I used to drive myself mad. And you know what? Since on this journey and saying that to myself, my life is so much easier. And it, you can, it's helpful, you know, before I came here today, I'm going to have the most wonderful journey. You know, you're just putting it out there, aren't you? And uh, it's really, really effective. Going back to heart energy and horses, I mean, obviously, you know, the science is showing how the, the horse's heart energy helps humans so much and of course this is why they're being used so much now for autism and for people with mental health 
problems because you know they do help and I think it's the same for any man animals it's like the chickens that are in the care homes yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't know if you've heard about them, you know, obviously it's the soothing movement, but it's also their frequency and the frequency of the grass and the trees as we go out in nature. I mean, you can put, you, if you go on YouTube and put in frequency of a pineapple, it's brilliant, it's amazing to hear the frequency of a pineapple, but of course it, it does affect us, doesn't it? If you, the, the, in Australia, they did a. There was an intensive care unit in Australia, and they did a. Well, they didn't do an experiment. They just realised that the recovery rate from that intensive care unit, because it was such a stifling environment, and people had to stay in the intensive care yeah. unit. Yeah. They took, they yeah. Yeah. Took them outside. They, they kept them. You know, they kept them on the machinery and took them outside. The recovery rate because they were outside. Yes. Uh, it was rapid, it was a rapid, you know, more rapid recovery rate. Yeah. And people were, yeah. and people got more, um, you know, they, they, they didn't have, they had more potential to, towards a full recovery than being stifled inside. And also animals going into care homes. Yes. Dogs, you know, any other, the, the, the recovery, you know, the recovery rate, the memories. Yeah. Recovery rate. Yeah. Which is, you know, especially di um, dementia. Is it dementia? The way they they um, get uh, they give them toys, cuddly toys, and uh, an animals and various things. Yes. You know, so yes. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah. There's a there's it's a. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's only humans who have put themselves at the top of this chain with the with the animals and we, we are not. Yeah, we're not. No, I would say that we're down there. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, we learn so much from our animals, don't we? So we're learning so much, so surely they've got to be above us a little bit. Surely. It was always an equal, the, sh the shamans and the indigenous peoples would always have said that it, it, was, it was equal, that they, they would communicate with the animals. They yes. Looked, well, they didn't have diversions and, and they communicated, they yes. only took yes. what they, they needed. Yes, indeed. They never took more than what was needed. They yes. And of other people that were coming up or other animals. Yes. They, they and they thank the ways. soul, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yes. They, yeah. And they, they honoured they honored them. Uh, they honoured themselves and then they honoured the animals yeah. as well. And I think we are going, we are slowly going back more to recognising this, aren't we? We are awakening. And, um, you know, and how we are with our animals as well. And I know in the equine world, you know, mm. more people are going barefoot more people are looking at not using a bit um, you know more people are becoming aware that you know having a horse in a stable as well isn't so great try and get them out and of course you know a bit like us if we were wandering around eating the plants and things you know we should be living more like that and the horses should as well so they could get their herbs that they needed and their hawthorn and their sticky weed and their dandelion so one thing I'm doing for um, little blackberry who's got liver disease is give her dandelions because yeah, that's really yeah, helpful. Yeah. It's very good for the liver. Okay. So I'm doing a bit of healing, Anyone giving her a few liver? dandelions. Well. Yes. Yeah. In fact, I went foraging the other day and had some dandelion. Yeah. You, you eat it? Yes, you can. Yeah. And hawthorn. Yeah. 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 It's all very good. Yeah. Do you need to ride a horse to assess it or not? No, not at all. Do you ever ride any of the horses you care for? Uh, I have, yeah. But it's not a requirement? No, no, no. I, I know much less riding a horse because I use my hands. Yeah. So, uh, and of course if you got a saddle between you and the horse, you know, you've got that in the way for start to do to change. Um, and it's, it's like, you know, our muscles are, it's where the energy is stored and it's like if we, the less we do, the less energy we have and it's the same for the horses as well. It's not very good for them to be in the stable. Mm. You know, it's much better for them to be out as much as possible and living like they would in the wild as well. Mm. And you know the feeds that they're given that has a, a serious impact on 
on their energy health as well. I go to a particular place and uh, it's, it's behind the stables and I'm like, um, as you can guarantee, what happens is the girls, the girls go to the gate and there's this really, really long, long valley or dip and then it goes back up again and the girls open the gates and then take the horses off and these horses, you get about three or four of them and they just run down the hill and then they run back up the hill and it's the freedom, the freedom that yes. you know, it's that, the release you know, and they throw their heads about. Yeah. And, you know, they really, you know, you, you can tell that, you know, it, I mean, they, they treat them well, the horses are treated well. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just that release. And it's, it's just that it's a lovely, lovely look across the valley. You can look straight across the valley and you're just sitting up a little bit high and I, I, you know, I sit there and have a little bit of a meditation and look you know, And sometimes you can, they're in that, like, you know, uh, it's a stable environment, but it's not. It's in a, a square, you know, where they've got a, 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 a what do they call it? What, a menage? A menage. <laughs> they're, in a, they're in a menage. And, you know, you can see them and they, but they just treat, they, treat, they do treat them very well. You can see the connection that they've got. Yes, they yes. So you you can only do what you can do at the end of the day. Um, but we we do have a lot to learn from the animals. It's like, um, you know, my dog, you know, they, I let him off the lead and he goes flying o over. You can feel, he's feeling the earth beneath his feet. He's thrown himself on the floor, rolling, all oh, lovely in the grass, sun on his tummy. <laughs> and I wish I could do that as well. But you know, we've got our you know boots on and everything, and so as soon as they can come off, the better. And it's the same for the horses. Obviously, if they're barefoot, they that makes them springier, and they're all happy, and they can roll about. Um, I think if the, the, the uh, think the upshot of it was because my friend's got a, a little horse. <laughs> And uh, she's, uh, she's only just got it, um, but she had a horse before. But what she does is she um, she used to ride without hooves because she's got field, so they can ride. So yeah, when they're riding sure. on the field, yeah, 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 sure. yeah not without hooves. No, no, they, kept <laughs> no they, they kept their hooves yeah, at my son. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they kept all the hooves. And uh, but uh, yeah, she's she's doing a lot of road. So when they go on the road, the harder surfaces. For some reason, they, they, you know, they, they put the, they, they shoot, they shoot them, you know, mm. get them shot. Mm. Mm. Have you ever worked with them? Um, like we were talking about the horses in the First World War. Have you ever worked with like army horses or mm. police horses mm. that are kind of in service in that way? Mm. No. That'd be interesting. Mm. Yeah, interesting. it would. I, I. I think you know they have very good relationship with the with the owners. Don't well, not the owners, yeah, but the the, the, the riders. Very, very good, very good. And we were talking earlier, actually. Um, you know, it used to be called extrasensory perception. I remember reading a book when I was younger about it with horses. Because I, I used to ride this horse, he was, the horse was a polo pony and the, the, the owner always had trouble stopping him and making him go and he had his teeth removed and all sorts of different things. But I literally would think canter and this horse would canter, I'd think stop and it would stop and I realised now what I was doing was energetically connecting, you know, so you know, could do an awful lot like that. Um, yeah, do you have any... Other questions? Well, one last thing, I mean, again, what do you do with a, a horse when someone comes up to tell you, oh, this horse is, this horse is known for kicking and things like that? Have you ever been in a situation where you've actually managed to calm a horse down so that it can not do that so much? Yeah, what absolutely. Is that anxiety? Oh, it can be a variety of things. What, kicking out? Yeah. Yeah, it, they might be in pain. Right. It might be the environment they're in. Yeah, you know, so, so are you uh, teaching that horse breathing techniques and therefore? <laughs> <laughs> no, it teaches me breathing techniques. Yeah, how to release. No, um, you know, any sort of behaviour like that often 
you can get to the bottom of is and it you know often it can be pain and discomfort or a past emotional trauma as well so healing as we know works brilliantly for emotional trauma and um, as well as physical I mean I find that with the horses do you find that with the humans mm. But I mean, obviously, with horses um, and and animals, it's so you know they don't have that ego blocking anything. That it just comes out, doesn't it? So, um, and you can block a human can block even without recognising it. I think my son was so desperate that I could actually do healing. He'd been blocking it for for nearly two years. I, I think he's just secretly thinking, Mum's really rubbish. But no. <laughs> Yeah, but, so, but then we suddenly recognised that um, that he had that block, and then he could feel it, and it removed. But it's like Nemo. I mean, look at what he did. Mm. How remarkable is that? He obviously blocked. He he, he was shut down. I, now, whether that's because of the trauma that he'd had with seeing his brother die, and the things that had happened in his life, that he was that shut down that he wasn't emanating any. His his energy fills with that narrow and, and closed down, and I think obviously I got in his field, and that's he wasn't happy. And he took himself off to the back of the stable, and you know, then communicating for him to change like that, it's quite remarkable, isn't it? Makes you you know often wonder why that is and how and. Having, you know, I mean, I, yeah. I used to do that with people. I used to, I, I used to go for. We we were told by the principal uh, that we should ask what the healing was like and what you know what they, if they felt anything, if they felt any movement, or and often or not, you, would, you, you know, there, there's an emotional one way emotions can come out. They they could really really laugh or they could cry or you know very different emotions would come out. Yes. You get an idea roughly. You know, but yes. We used to do fairly much what you're doing there, but we used to just ask the clients yes. how, but you know, if they felt anything. And then I stopped. Well, one side was sort of a little bit more independent. I stopped even asking that, and I just um, just kind of trusted that whatever was given was given, yes. and what, whatever was received was received. Yes. So it, it's, uh, Yes, because it is important to, for, to get out of the way of the, heal, the yeah. healing to go through, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So I certainly found when I, I first started and I was trying so hard, that's the worst thing you can do, to try. Yeah, that's right. yeah. So, you know, I, I put the intention there before, you know, as I'm going and connect energetically. And when I'm there, I just let everything flow then. <laughs> it flows. Well, any more questions? I think that's about it, isn't it? Can I just let you know, you can take any cards at the back and if you have any questions, email me, won't you? And if I can help you at all, just contact me. And thank you so much for inviting me and sharing this time with me. It's been great. Thank you, Joe. Very Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So, um... John will let us know when that uh, recording is available for scrutiny and then you can <coughs> cast your eye over it, decide whether you want any little bits uh, edited out and then we'll have it up on the uh, <laughs> YouTube channel. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Thank Thanks you very John. much. Thank right. you. Thank you all for coming, folks. Do take a flyer for our next uh, talk on colour healing. Um, William Bird So uh, we hope to see you there. If anyone's interested in colour and the, the ways of using colour for healing, then bring them along as best. Uh, Oh,